What's called about? Oh, about is called about. Okay, okay. Come on, guys. I'm pretty sure I'm this page. Yeah. Math page. Let's go. Everybody get this math page open in front of them. Now, once again, you'll notice this is a page from your workbook, but I copied it and put it inside your packet. That is because not everybody, not everyone has been good at turning in the work from the workbook, so this is a little bit easy. Okay? So you can turn it in all at once. That's all right here in front of you. So, benchmark brackets. Remember when we talked about benchmarks before, guys? What I mean when I say benchmark? Let's take a look at this one again and see if we can answer it. So it says Tina used benchmark fractions to decide that 3 eighths is less than 7 eighths. Do you agree? Do you agree that 3 eighths is less? Then seven eighths. Let's write them out. Three eighths. Seven eighths. She thinks the three eighths is less than seven eighths. Do you agree with this? And she used benchmark fractions. How do you think she used benchmark fractions? What do you think she did? How could she have used them, guys? Give me a give me an example. Right? Well, how could she have done it? Could she have thrown in a one half? Could she have said, and then went from there? Could she have done that? How? What do you think? You draw it out. We do a number line. Let's do zero to one, and let's let's do it as as eights because we have two. Do the same denominator, right? Like denominators. So now we have eight parts, right? Now we've got one, two, three, eights right here. Then we have four eights. It's obviously going to be our middle, right? Our one half. We have seven eights over here. So could she have used one half to help her determine which one's greater? And how could she have used it? What is one half equivalent to here? Let me mark these. This one's three eighths. This one is seven eighths. So what is what is the middle one on? What's the one half on? What's it on? Right? Um, what, on? what did I mark? What is that middle? What's the fraction that marks that one half? What's the equivalent fraction to one half? That works with eight as a denominator. What comes after three eighths, guys? If you were going to label this line, what comes after three eighths? Okay, well, that's right. Four eighths would be right here. And four eighths is equivalent to one half, correct? Because what's the relationship between four and eight? Ariana? Four is half of eight, right? So she actually could have drawn it out, or she even could have just written it out, right? She could have said, okay, three-eighths is here, four-eighths is one-half, and that's right down the middle. And seven-eighths is way over here. And then she determined that three-eighths is less than seven-eighths. So is she correct? Do you guys agree? Is three-eighths less than seven-eighths? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Does anybody disagree? Wait, you disagree? You think that it's, uh, three eighths is greater than seven eighths? Wait, hang on. I wish you. You agree? I Tell me why. Okay, because you know how the denominator is the same. Um. She did it three eighths and three eighths. Okay. Well, I meant um, so three eighths, uh, three eighths and three sevenths. 
Why would you do a string answer with three sevens? Why change the denominator? Don't change the denominator. We already have a like denominator. I keep it the same. That's okay. But what's to explain to me why you agree with her? Ariana, do you want to explain why you agree? I don't know if you guys could hear, but she said when the denominators are the same, then it matters if the numerators are different, right? And of course, it matters anyway, but it matters because, she said, one is greater than the other one. So in this case, if your numerator is greater, you've got the same denominator, but one of the numerators is greater, that will be the greater fraction. Am I right? Am I right, guys? Yes or no? Yeah? But why? So me tell me why. And you can look at this to tell me. Or we can draw a fraction um, strips as well, right? If I drew out yeah, if I drew out fraction strips and the whole is the same and it's divided in the same number of parts, we know that, right? And we did ideally they would line up exactly. Right? And this one was three eighths. And this one was seven eighths. Which one's, which one's greater? You can tell by looking at it, right? Yeah? Seven eight. Yes. So because, like let's say these were, let's say once again these were Kit Kat. And for some reason, I cut a Kit Kat into eight pieces. And I said to Briggs, you can have three. And then the other Kit Kat, you know, they come in a package of two, right? So I gave Rick three pieces of one of the Kit Kat, and then the other one I uh, gave Heston seven pieces. Who got a better deal? That's right, Heston got a better deal. Right? Because I gave him seven out of eight pieces. And I gave Rick only three out of eight pieces, and then I ate all the other ones. So yeah, not, not even, right? They're not even. And then, if you were to use like we were talking about, if you were to use a benchmark fraction like one half, which would also be four eighths, right? Four eighths equals one half. That would be like doing this. Because now she's thinking, okay, wait a minute. Well, what happens if what happens if I draw it in that I color in one half on each of them? Oh, seven eighths keeps going, right? There's still more parts. So clearly, seven eighths is a greater fraction. Does that make sense? Remember when it says to explain, they want you guys to explain why. She's right, That's it. That's right. This would be well, unless it's one of those big ones. That would work pretty well. The other one's kind of small, right? That's right. Twix, we talked about using Twix. This is bar donut, you know? Like maple bar. Yes. I'm sorry, what? Oh, there you go. Maybe candy bar really works for this, right? Okay, we're not talking about which candy bar is working. Let's move on. Class, class. Now, let's finish up with our guided practice here. So, let's look at number two. It says write two fractions. Bless you. Write two fractions with a denominator of six that are closer to zero than one. We need two fractions. I need you guys to give me two fractions with a denominator of six, so we know that the denominator is going to be six on both of them. But they need to be closer to zero than one. So two six. Two six. Well, that's kind of um, between zero and one, right? But you know what? It is closer to zero. You're right. 
because you draw it out. <laughs> That's not a real fraction though, right? He's right though, because two would be right here. And one's all the way over there, right? So two six works, that's closer. That's closer to zero. Then you want to go ahead. What's another one, bro? Six. Now three six, and I apologize, so because that's what I was thinking you said originally. Three six is right in the middle. Three six is equivalent to what? Three six is equivalent to what? Right. What's it equivalent to? Yeah. It's equivalent to one half. So I wouldn't say that it's closer to zero than one, because it's literally right in the middle. Right? But there is another option. There's one other fraction that would be closer to zero than one. Yes. Sorry, say it again. One six is the one. That's the one. That's the one. Because it's right here. One six and two six. There are two fractions that are closer to zero than one. Does that make sense, guys? Thumbs up? Does it make sense? It doesn't make sense. You gotta let me know. But it makes sense if you look at it on the, on the number line, right? That this is one six and this is two six. Those are closer to zero, which is over here. Remember, this is zero right here. Than they are to one, which is all the way over on this side, right? And then this one right here is, is three six or one half. Does that make sense? Yeah? Thumbs up? Down. Question? Oh, it makes sense? Deva. Oh, that's a thumb. Okay, good. Good. Okay, so let's look at this one. Write two fractions with a denominator of eight. A denominator of eight, same thing, right? That are closer to one than to zero. Opposite of the other one, right? Ariana, what's one one? So she said five, man. What's another one? Three eighths is closer to zero than it is to one. Four eighths would be what? Four and a half. That's right, four eighths would be one half. So what else? What's another one? Here's zero. Here's one. Now we've got, this is the middle, right? Right here? Middle is four eighths or one half. We have five eighths right here. Five eighths is definitely closer to one. What's another one though? There are two more options there. Go ahead. Go ahead. There are two more options there. Tell you got one? What comes after five eighths? Six eighths is one, right? Six eighths could work, yes. Six eighths and seven eighths could work. Six eighths and seven eighths both work. Because now you've got this one, this is six eighths, seven eighths. And one is equivalent to what? How would we say one is what? What would we say is the fraction for one in this situation? Screw it. We can close the door. At least, uh, not all the way. Yes. Eight eighths. Eight eighths is one here, right? Good. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Now it says in four to six, choose from the fractions one eighth, one fourth, six eighths, and three fourths, and use fraction scripts to help. So, out of these, right here. Now, we're going to draw two different fraction scripts. Okay, we're going to assume that the whole is the same. But then we're dividing it into two different amounts, right? Of pieces. So one, we're going to do into four. And the next one, we're going to do into. I do that kind of badly. We reach around that bottom. There we go. Okay, one, two, 
Okay, so now we've got one that's cut into four parts and one that's cut into eight parts. We're assuming the whole is the same, but one is cut into four parts, that's why it's got four as the denominator, and one is cut into eight, eight parts. So, this one then, our fractions are, we've got, we're trying to answer out of one eighth, one fourth, six eighths, and three fourths. Which ones are closer to zero, and which ones are closer to one? So here are the fraction strips, right? So let's start out by marking one eighth. That's one eighth. Right? The other option is we could have written one eighth inside there, correct? So it could have gone like this. And wrote one eighth inside there. Kind of hard to see. Now let's do one fourth. One fourth is there, okay. Now let's do six eighths. One more right here, one more right here, one more right here, one here, and one here. So now when we're all the way over there, that's six eighths, right? Now, let's draw out. Let's a couple more to make it a little easier on ourselves. Okay, so now we're doing the same thing again, but now we have six eighths. So this in this one, right? We've got we have one eighth here, so we're just going to do it this way. Let's make it easier. One eighth here, one fourth here. This one we will do three fourths, and this one we will do the six eighths. So. When you look at the pictures, you can tell which ones are closer to zero, right? Because if you imagine the fraction strips like number lines, you've got zero on this side and one hole on that side, right? So, which ones, which of those fractions are closer to zero than to one? Which one of the fractions are closer to zero and to one? Remember, the fractions are up here. Which of those fractions are closer to zero than they are to one? Yeah? Say it again. Tell me what the fraction is. That's right. One fourth and one eighth. Don't draw my little hand symbol. One fourth and one eighth. Now it makes sense that one fourth and one eighth. These two right here, right? Wouldn't those be closer? Does that make sense? That they're closer? Now, am I missing one though? Or is that it? What do you think? Are the other two closer to one than they are to zero? Yes? No? Well, let's look at it. Did it help seeing them on a number line or as fraction strips? Which is easier? Do you think the fraction strips are easier than the number line when it comes to seeing which one's closer to zero and one? Well, use what's going to work for you guys. But is three fourths closer to zero or closer to one? Closer to zero or closer to one? Think about the one is one whole, Jack. It's closer to one, right? Because you have three out of four parts. What about six eighths? Is that closer to zero or closer to one? Closer to zero, closer to one. Well, kids, you have six out of eight parts. Zero? Are you sure that that's closer to zero? Six out of eight parts. And eight eighths is one whole. Why? That's right. So still, our answer here is one fourth. Anyway, those are the ones that are closer to zero. So then we already determined down here, these two here, are closer to one.
than they are to zero. Because remember, anytime you have the numerator and denominator that are the same, you're talking about the one whole, right? So in this case, we would be talking about a whole that's four fourths and a whole that's eight eighths. So three out of four parts in the whole is going to be closer to one. And six out of eight parts in the whole would be closer to one as well, right? Does that make sense, guys? Thumbs up if it makes sense. You gotta let me know. Kind of. Now, personally, I think when it comes to talking about what's closer to zero and what's closer to one, that a number line is easier. Because, my opinion, let's draw right over the other one. Zero on one end, one on the other. Now, let's mark it as if we're marking it for, we're going to do both on the same line, okay? I don't want you guys to get too confused by what I'm doing here. I don't want to erase everything. I actually just want to erase a little bit. Okay. So, let's draw the lines for, for our, and what was our fractions? Our fractions were 3 fourths and 6 eighths, correct? So, we need 1, 2, 3. Now we've got four parts, right? And then, we need to draw out the lines for the other one, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. We should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts right here, right? So, let's look at those. If we were to mark on this line where Three fourths would be, be right here, correct? That would be three fourths. If we were to mark where six eighths would be, guess what? Where would we be on the line? Six eighths, where would we be? One, two, three, four, five, six. Who caught that, that those are the same? Did you catch that? They're the same, right? They're equivalent, aren't they? That's right. Good. They're equivalent. Three-fourths. And remember why, guys? Who can tell me why? How can we get from three to six? Good. How can we get from three to six? What do I multiply three, six, three by to get to six? What do I multiply three by to get the six dollars? Three times what equals six? Two. Three times two equals six. Jack, what times four equals eight? That's right. Those are equivalent fractions. So you we actually you can see that in our fraction bars as well, right? But you can also tell based on this picture, look how close they are to one. They're way far away from zero, right? So you can see right there that they're further away from zero than they are from one, right? Okay, so use the two fractions with the denominator of eight to write a true statement. What am I gonna put here? Which one is lesser out of the two fractions with the eight? So our options were one eight, and 6 eighths. Those are the fractions that we need to put over here. Which one is greater than the other one? What am I putting in there, Andrew? <coughs> which fraction is greater, 1 eighth or 6 eighths? 6 eighths is greater, right? So which side do I draw that on right here? Which side? This side right here? So six eighths on this side, and one eighth on that side. That's right. Now don't get fooled, guys, because I know that yeah, a lot of the problems we've been working on, they've been asking which one's greater, specifically which one's greater. A lot of these problems are actually talking about which one's less. But remember, that's the same question, it's just reverse. Same question though, right? Okay. Which one's greater? 
which one's greater and which one's less? Same question. Okay, so let's take a really quick look at what we're going to do. We got the independent practice section to do right here. I don't know what that means right there. The independent practice section to do right here. And then the homework and practice section. Okay? Then, so stop there. Don't move on to this one yet because I'm going to tell you what you're going to do with this one. Okay? So one more time, do not move on to the role and compare yet. But the independent practice section is right here. Make sure that you read these carefully, guys. It says, in seven and eight, choose from the fraction two thirds, seven eighths, one fourth, and two sixths. Okay? Then, they're asking you the same questions. Read these questions carefully. The same questions that we answered above. This one, it says compare in 9 to 14. And write these. You guys are good at that. You've been doing that for days. So don't worry too much about that one. I think you're going to be fine there. Then, my work of practice is much the same. In the another look section, guys, do you have to do anything there? No. Nope. Should you read it? Yes. Yes. Please read it. It reminds you what you're doing. I always read this little note here, too. Use benchmark fractions to compare fractions. Now, listen, I know some of you guys probably aren't going to actually bless you. Use benchmark fractions because you've gotten really good at comparing them without the benchmark fractions. Okay? So I don't want you guys getting, bless you, too caught up in those if they're confusing to you or if they aren't the best way for you guys to do it. Okay? I just need to know that you know how and you know what they are. But you guys are awesome at comparing fractions. You've been doing it for days, right? And you feel pretty good about comparing fractions, yes? Thumbs up? Or down, or, you know, be honest. Yeah? So you're getting there is what you're saying. That's what I want to know. Good, good, good. You can do it, but you don't like it. That's fair. Still got to do it, though. Then, when we're done with these, I will explain what we're doing here. But keep in mind, these are the same thing. Same thing you're doing in the uh, independent practice. The exact same stuff. You're using these fractions to answer the questions. Right? And one and two, you're using these fractions. Down here, you've got two separate questions. And then here, from 5 to 10, you're doing the greater than, less than, or equal to. Okay? So, let's go ahead and get started. And let's see how far we can get. Okay, any questions before we start? All right, let's do it. We are going to, I want everybody on this page. This is the independent practice page. Everybody get this page up. We're going to review this one together. We're going to review the homework and practice together. And then I'll explain what you're doing on the other page. Okay? Brewer, your body and face should be this direction, not that direction. Everybody needs to be looking up here and participating, okay? So I think that we got a little bit confused with the benchmark fractions. And I think a couple of the problems have got that set up. A little stuff. So we're going to go over those. But let's do the other ones quickly because here's the thing. Honest, you guys feel pretty comfortable with comparing fractions. Thumbs up. Side with those. Some of you are feeling a little. Be honest with it. Yeah? Get there with the comparing cut. Because you guys have been pretty good at those. I think, though, throwing in these benchmarks has actually made it a little more confusing. Is that correct? Yes? Get a yes in it. That's a good question. Can you be the teacher tomorrow? No. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. Okay. So we did the top part. We started looking at these. Here's what I'm going to do down here. We're going to look at these down here first. And then we're going to come back up to the other ones and talk about those. Because I think we have two issues there. One, I need everybody focused in this direction. Okay? One, our first issue is that some of you didn't read the directions again, even though I read them to you and then asked you to read them. Okay? Two, I think you're just getting confused by the way they're asking the question. So we're going to go over it again. But... Let's go ahead and do these first as a group, these bottom ones, the comparisons. 
And I want everybody participating. So I need everybody at their desk, focused, looking forward, not playing with anything that's in your hand currently. Go ahead and put it away. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Ariana, go ahead and go. Grace, do you have a question? Okay, we have to wait then, okay? Which is greater, guys? Five eighths or seven eighths? Which is, I need everybody to participate. Seven eighths. Seven eighths. Which is greater, five eighths or two eighths? Five eighths. That's right. Which is greater, three fourths or three sixths? Three fourths. Wyatt, you are not participating. Which one's greater, three fourths or three sixths? Three fourths. Sure about that? Ah, uh, no, 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 don't just change it. I just need you to tell me why. Somebody tell me why. Andrew. A little louder. And what is 3 6 equivalent to? Say what? That's right. 3 6 equals 1 half. So you guys are both correct. Yes, 3 fourths is greater than 3 6 because 3 6 is also 1 half. And just like Andrew said, if you draw it out, it is. The 3 is closer to the 4, right? Then a 3 is to a 6. Okay, 4 6 and 4 8. Four, six. Everybody, I need everybody to participate. Four, six, six, eight, six. 2 6 and 2 4. Two, four. What is 2 4 equivalent to? Four, That's right. 2 thirds and 1 third. Two, two, That's right. Is there anybody in this room who got anything different? It's okay, you did it. No? No different? Feeling good about it? Good. But if you did, that's okay. I just want to know why. We can talk about it. Brewer. Oh, okay. Okay, good. That's okay to fix it. On the other one, I got gotcha. you. So, obviously the ones with the like denominators are easier, right? Because then all you're doing is looking at the numerator, and whichever numerator is greater, that's the greater fraction. That's when you have a like denominator, right? When you have different, the unlike denominators, now you're looking at, you might even want to draw it out, right? When in doubt, draw it out. But now you're looking at, how many parts first you're looking at things like are there any equivalent fractions? But you're looking at the comparison between the sizes of the denominator, the parts that the, the denominator makes up, right? So you know that if you cut the same whole into six parts in this case, those parts are going to be smaller than the parts in the three fourths, right? Cutting into four parts. So it kind of seems like it's the opposite, right? Because the greater your denominator, the smaller the parts. Make sense? Go ahead. Wait, did I say? Yes, after eight. Okay, now let's go back up to this one. What does this green box say right here, guys? Does somebody want to read that to me? You want to read that one, Chava? Good. Guys, when you see a box like that, I don't care if it's gray on your page or whatever it is. Those are instructions. You need to read them. I know I read them to you guys, but when I came around, there several of you hadn't read it. They gave you four fractions to choose from. Okay? Now, remember what I said. You're looking for in the first one, which is the fraction that's closer to zero than one. If you need to draw out a number line, draw out a number line. If you need to draw out fractional strips, draw out fraction strips, right? When in doubt, draw them out. But listen, the other way of looking at this, which I also said to you guys, important is look for which ones of these fractions are are the lesser fractions. Which ones are greater, which ones are lesser, which ones are smaller. <laughs> then, once you determine which ones are smaller, then you can determine which ones are closer to zero. Zero means you're closer to that to the, that left side, right? Like in the numer the number line, you're closer to having zero parts. The one, that's going to be the one that's closer to the numerator, the denominator, excuse me. The numerator that is closer to the denominator, right? Closer to having one whole. So in this case, which are the which are the greater fractions here and which ones are the lesser fractions? 
Which are the better ones? Um, Jack. So we got seven eighths, and he said two six. I'm definitely going to say seven eighths is one of the better ones, right? And of course, we also have two thirds and one fourth. Now, look at each one of these fractions individually. Now, we've determined which one is the greatest one out of all of them, correct? Or am I wrong? Because I'm going to say 2 6 is not one of the greater fractions. But there's another one. Schmidt. Nope. Nope. I want you guys to look at this. Let's, let's take a step back. What is the relationship here? How close is 7 to 8? How close is 7 to 8? Briggs? 2 thirds. 2 thirds is the other one. Because how close is 7 to 8? Jack? It's one away, right? How close is two to three? How close is two to three, guys? Ariana? It's one away. Jed, put up. How close is one to four, Jed? That's right. It's closer to zero because it's three off from four, right? How close is two to six, guys? How close is two to six? Wilkins? It's four off. So is it closer to zero? Or is it closer to six? If that's right, it's closer to zero. So now we've just determined these two are closer to zero. So your answer here is one fourth and don't do my and. Get rid of that. Don't do that. Of course, you guys are on paper, so you won't have that issue. One fourth and two sixths are the ones that are closer to zero. Think of one as the denominator. Guys, listen. I'm good. Stop messing with whatever you're messing with. Pay attention. Think of one as the denominator. Look for how close your numerator is to your denominator, okay? So in this case, two-thirds and seven-eighths are going to be the ones that are closer to one. So your answers here are going to be two-thirds and seven-eighths are the ones that are closer to one than to zero. Does that make some sense? Some sense? Well, let's do the same thing on the second page. Let's take a look at that one. First, let's do the bottom like we did before. Okay, everybody, which one's greater, two sixths or two fourths? Two fourths. And two fourths is equivalent to what? One half. That's right. One fourth or one eighth? One fourth. Three sixths or five sixths? Five sixths. Because three sixths is equivalent to what? One half. That's right. Two thirds or two thirds? Good. One sixth and one fourth? One fourth. One fourth. Three-thirds and three-eighths. Three-eighths. Three because three-thirds is what? One fourth. That's right. See, I told you guys know how to do this stuff. You guys are awesome at comparing fractions. Now, now let's go to this one where we got saw where I saw a little confusion again. Who wants to read this to me? Who's gonna read that one to me? If somebody who has and uh, Abigail, hand out your mouth though. Okay, read this one to me. Okay, stop counting whoever's doing that with the box. Five, six, three, four, and three, eight. That's right, so our fractions are one third, five, six, three fourths, and three eighths. Now, I'm going to go through each one of these fractions, and I'm going to ask you which one is closer, which numerator is closer to its denominator, okay? Brewer, look up, pay attention. Let's look at one-third first, because our first question is, which of the fractions are closer to one than to zero? Second question is, which are closer to zero than to one, okay? 
They actually reverse them if you notice from the second page. So one third. How many spaces do we have away from one and three? How how much do you have to get from one to three? Switch. Abigail, what are you doing? Okay, two. Two, that's right. So, guys, is one closer to three or zero? Jack? Uh, zero. That's right. It's closer to zero. So you're going to add this one to this one right here. Remember, read these carefully. This bottom one is the zero. Now, what about the next fraction? Five, six. How close to five? How close to six is five? How close to six is five? Brewer. One away. It's one away. So is five closer to one or zero? Five closer to one or zero? One. That's right. Exactly. Because five is closer to six. Six is our one in this case. What about three fourths? How close is three to four, Ariana? It's one away. So does that mean that three is closer to one or zero? One. That's right. It's closer to one. Now, last one. Three, eight. How close is three to eight? How close is three to eight? Jack. Five away. It's five away. So does that mean that three is closer to zero or to one? Zero. zero. It's closer to zero. That's right. Good. Is this starting to make some sense? Getting a little bit better? A little bit better? Yeah? Seems like it's getting a little bit better. Kinda? It's alright, we just need a little more work on it, I think. Okay. Now, write two fractions with a denominator of eight that are closer to zero than to one. Two fractions with a denominator of eight that are closer to zero than they are to one. Who wants to give me one of them? Schmidt. Um. Three. Three eighths? Closer to zero. That's correct. That's correct. We've got at least two other options here. Well, only have two other options here. What's another one? What's another one, Jack? Sharpen? Go ahead. What's another one, Talon? What's another fraction with a denominator of eight that's closer to zero than it is to one? Did you say two? Two eighths? Yes, two eighths is another one. Two eighths is another one. Now, there is another one you could have chosen. Another one. Welcome. Five eighths? Nope. Four? Nope. Okay. Table. Okay. One eighth. Yes. Now, the reason that five and four won't work is because four eighths is equivalent to what, guys? One half. It's one half. So you know that's exactly in the middle, so it's not closer to zero or to one. Five won't work because it's on the other side of that one half, right? Five is closer to eight than it is to zero. Six is closer to eight than it is to zero, right? But so, uh, so these are the three options you could have had there. Now, this one I know confused you guys, but here's what it's asking you to do. It says, remember, circle, highlight, underline the important information. I'm still not seeing a lot of that when I walk around. Some of you are doing it. You have three fractions. One is a benchmark mark fraction, that is one half. They want you to write, it says, three comparisons. That means you're just comparing those three fractions. The first thing you would do is, which is greater? Start on the left. Which is greater? One half or one eighth? Which is greater? One half or one eighth? One half. That's right. Okay, next one would be one half. And five eighths. Which is greater, one half or five eighths? One, 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 one half. One half. You guys sure about that? Five eighths. Five eighths. It's five eighths because we just talked about it with this example. If you were to draw this out on a number line, zero to one, and you had eight parts, and you said one half. That would be the same thing as four eighths, it'd be right in the middle. Well, five eighths would be right here on the right hand side. Which is closer to eight? Which one's closer to eight? Remember, one whole is eight eighths, right? Which one's closer, guys? 
That's right. That's right, the pi eighths is closer. So, you know that one half has to be smaller than five eighths. Five is closer to eight. Right? What happens? Right in the middle. Now, third one. We gotta get rid of that to get it out of the way. Last one. It's said to do three comparisons, right? So your last comparison is one eighth and five eighths. Which is greater? One eighth or five eighths? One eighth or five eighths? Five eighths. That's right. Now, when we draw it out like this, and you look at it one step at a time, does that problem make sense now? I've had a lot of questions on that problem. To make a little bit more sense, it just asks you to do three comparisons between those three new fractions, right? That's all you had to do there. That's it. Make sense, guys? Question? Any questions, guys? Give me your question. Be honest. Great. Third grade. Third grade. That's why we're doing it right now. Kindergarten's going to do it. If the kindergarten did this, if the kindergartners would look at you like you were crazy. You're just learning what shapes are. <laughs> you start talking to them about fractions, they're not going to know what you're talking about. So, any questions on this, though? Looks like we're probably going to have to do a little bit more on this area. Essay. You don't like it. Me too. With the with the benchmarks or just the comparisons? So put your hands up when you want to say something. You said that the uh, you said comparisons were easy. You changed your mind because they got a little bit more difficult. All this we know in eighth grade they're doing way more confusing stuff than this. In eighth grade I might give you a problem with something like this. What? All right. Well, yeah, eventually A means like B. Like no, a means you don't know what it means. Weird stuff. It could make no, me brain. That would actually mean nothing what I just put on there. But it could make me brain explode. Okay. But the point is, is that you're going to do a lot more complicated stuff when you get there. But yeah, these are going to get hard, but that's okay. As long as you know how to do them. You'll get there. It just takes practice. Everything takes practice. Right. Now. Well, the other thing that she has to do at that grade level is they do things like this that we haven't even gotten to yet. I wouldn't be asking you which one's greater. I'd be asking you something like, well, that's it. That's right. I'd be asking you something like, what's one eight times five eight? You haven't done that stuff yet. But anyway, all it takes is practice. None of these are really hard. It just takes practice, right? We just have to do it enough so that you guys look at it and you say, well, I remember how to do that. Just remember, guys, when I'm asking you which one's closer to zero and which one's closer to one, the one is your denominator. Because you're looking for the total number of parts in the whole, right? So then always compare your numerator to your denominator. When you're being asked a question like this, which one's goes from zero from zero to one, okay? And when in doubt, draw it out. I recommend number lines for this type of thing. Because then you can visually see which one's closer to zero and which one's closer to one. Great. Yeah, well, that's what we're going to talk about right now. So, everybody, go ahead and flip over to the next page. Roll and compare. You guys are going to test with a partner, which means in your group. So, listen, guys, hold on. It's probably going to be this way and this way. Okay. I want you guys to do, you're going to be playing with people who are sitting closest to you. Now, if you're at a table that has five, that means that they're going to be, uh, we'll probably have to do something that's slightly different that way. Okay? So we're actually probably, because I don't want people moving around, we're going to stay where we are. We may have to do, if we can, 
I don't think that, that we're going to be able to do groups of three. But what I think we can do is we will have Jen and Nick, Zoe and Andrew, I'm oh, sorry, Joel and Nick, Zoe and Andrew, Jen and Ariana, Briggs and Tava, um, Talon and Jack, Abigail and Aiden, Heston and Brewer, Chloe and Ian, and then the two Wyatts. Okay, so there will be some, there'll be a little bit of a little bit of shifting, only because we have a couple teams that have too many people. Yes. Wyatt times two. Twice. Okay. But, uh, Back around. Really quickly go through the rest of this and I'll, and I'll address questions. So you're going to have a partner. We just partnered off. You're going to roll two dice. I'm going to pass around dice, right? Two dice to form a fraction with the larger digit as the denominator. Remember, ideally, we always want to have the bigger number on the bottom, okay? So whoever rolls the larger digit is going to be the denominator, all right? Then you're going to write the digits and the fraction on the game sheet. This is your game sheet right here. Okay. So let's say you have player one right here, whoever that is. Well, that'll be me, myself, and I. Me and myself. I rolled one that was a six, and another was a two. Two six. I rolled one. That was a four, and another that was a three. <coughs> three, it was three, it was four, it's right? <laughs> <coughs> and then, that's the police are coming out. Player two is going to do the same thing, right? Form a fraction, large digit as the denominator, record the digits, then you're going to compare the two fractions. Whoever has the larger fraction, the greater fraction, wins that round. Okay? That means then you're going to write your initials <laughs> underneath the winner. Whoever wins the most rounds wins the whole game. <laughs> so, in this case, which is greater, two sixths or three fourths? Which is greater, two sixths or three fourths? Three fourths. So that means myself would the winner on that one. Make sense, guys? Next question. I think we do it on both. Wait. Guys, please stop talking. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sure you're drinking water. Dad, you have a question. That's right. It's up, right? There you go. There you go. Chris. Oh. Oh. You guys are writing the same things down. You guys are writing the same things down. Don't copy what I wrote. You're playing your own game. That was just an example. So I'm going to pass out some dice. Actually, hold on. We're going to go to reset, then we'll do this afterwards. Ask a question. Hey, 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 hold on. Freeze. Ask a question. Do you? When you roll the dice, you need to roll. I'm going to do is each team is going to get two dice. So what it means is that you'll take your hand, roll them both at the same time, write both those numbers down. And the next person will do the same thing. Wait. Yes, yeah, so this is what it's going to look like. Let me give you a quick example. So let's say, let's say I was over here, and I'm Heston, and I roll my dice. Heston <laughs> just rolled two. Guys, please stop. Heston rolled two and two. So his two numbers he would write down are two and two. The fraction is two over two, which equals four. And then. You guys gonna roll both write the same thing down on your paper. The brewer rolls. 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 The brewer
sure just roll a five and one. She's just going to get one bit. And then that means that has to win the round because we had one hole. Okay? Does that make sense, guys? Yes. Guys, why do I hear talking when people ask me questions? You are only delaying your recess. Please take a seat. I'm going to go back to your desk because the quiet house, the quietest house, will be the house to call first. Yes, go ahead and grab another one. Go ahead and grab another one. So, what happens if we get an equal? Is it, do we just write tie on the lamp set? Yep, yep, exactly. It could happen. It could happen. Andrew, question. Whoever has the greatest fraction will be the winner in this battle. And then at the very end, whoever has the most wins wins the whole game. Now, the other option is this. You can either both write the same things down on each piece of paper, or you could play two different games and write some of the results on one and the other results on the other. Depends on how much time we have, but we might be able to do that too. Okay? Well, I don't think this will take too long to do. You guys are good at comparing fractions. Brewer, question. Oh, you're stretching. Okay. So quietest house is going to be the house to go first. So let's go with... Looks to me like it's going to be Ravenclaw first today. <laughs> <laughs>